Hey guys, Silence Yao here. Welcome back for more Baycast videos. So today is episode 2 of Baycast and of course, as you can tell the pattern, we are following whenever the Japanese Baytube channel actually release official information regarding the upcoming Beyblades itself. So yes, they finally showcased the um, brand new Silver Wolf Beyblade. Of course, it is following the unique line Beyblades itself. So it's the UX series. And of course, if you have seen a lot of leaked images here and there, you have probably seen its design already, but have no idea how it's going to play out. This is what this video is all about. We're going to break down what they actually introduced in the episode for Silver Wolf itself. So first things first, Silver Wolf will be a starter set that comes with a black launcher and of course the prongs that holds the Beyblade itself will be in a silver colour as well as we have seen from all the UX base launch series. And of course the cord that you pull out of the launcher is going to be silver as well. Um, well according to the Japanese people they say that uh, black and silver is always a very sexy color but personally for myself I'm a black and red person <laughs> that's why Hell's Hammer was mwah, chef kiss anyways um, so first things first let's talk about the new bit so the thing that probably is intriguing everybody what is this new bit so those of you who could read Japanese and seen the magazine leaks back in uh, you know the Koro Koro issue magazines where a lot of people who were staying in Japan um, that released the magazine information itself uh, through um, Twitter or X uh, whichever one you call it by nowadays um, yeah so we know what FB stands for already and it's called Free Ball. So Free Ball is basically ball but with free spin. <laughs> so I, I know it doesn't really make sense but um, so they actually showcase how Free Ball is going to be like and how it's going to behave on the Beyblade itself. Um, but let's talk about how it actually looks in design first. So, first things first, I don't know if you can see from this image or not, um, but personally from my eyes when I saw this, I was like, hmm, doesn't free ball kind of look shorter than ball? <laughs> I don't know, it just, it might be me because the bit was yellow and you can't really see the top of the ball bit, um, I mean the free ball bit um, compared to ball because ball was orange. <laughs> So they didn't use the yellow ball bit which was originally on uh, Wizard Arrow and then comparing to the one on uh, Silver Wolf which is the yellow one so I don't know but it looks shorter in my sight so uh, maybe that's why they gave it the 380 ratchet um, for Silver Wolf because they need a bit of height because free ball might be a bit shorter. Let me know your thoughts about the height in the comment section down below. Um, yeah, do you think it's actually shorter than ball? Uh, but it does look to be shorter to me uh, personally. But anyways, okay. So let's talk about um, basically what I think about free ball. So they did mention in the video that, you know, the jagged portions of the bit that you normally see, um, it's not there on the free ball. So that's why um, it's got free spin so um so this design was basically to help with stamina play so if you knew that the ratchets inside um do have like plastic pieces that actually hook onto the the bit itself where you when you turn the bit so i'll i'll, I'll have the video playing behind the this one while i'm talking so you know like the japanese people are showing the the, the bit rotating um, in the background with the jagged noise then of course when free ball is turning there is no noise at all so what that actually helps with stamina play is that um, it with less friction to the bit itself um, it actually doesn't drain stamina when spinning so that's gonna be essential especially when you hit against the wall and then the ratchet clings onto the bit and then try to restrict it so i don't know if this will actually be good for stamina play actually or is it going to help with um making yourself burst even faster <laughs> you know because it doesn't cling on so it loses grip from the bit and then it just burst uh what are your thoughts let me know in the comment section down below personally if it doesn't burst as much as i think it would is this bit going to be the replacement for Wizard Ball. 
<laughs> is this going to be a new meta bit for Wizard Ball? Oh my god. <laughs> and then now the thing is, because these two bits look so familiar, Game Masters are going to have a hell of a time trying to figure out if this is free ball or ball. <laughs> They had to pull it out and check. Uh, <laughs> GMs, if you are watching this video, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. It is going to be so hilarious for all the the the, the, the tournament checkings. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, but anyways, okay, let's move on to Silver Wolf's Blade itself. So Silver Wolf's Blade looks very interesting um, considering that it does have somewhat of a similar gimmick that was introduced in Plastic Gen as well. The first generation of Beyblade where they had, you know, the rotating plastic bit. I can't remember the black colour Beyblade that had that. Um, so, it, I, if I do remember, I'll put it somewhere on the video. Um, but yeah, so it had that rotating plastic bit at the bottom. So in the Plastic Gen series, um, that was supposed to be kind of like a secondary attack blade. But this one, in Silver Wolf, it's used to parry, parry attacks. So, Interestingly enough, if you look closely at the plastic blade design, um, I will have a screenshot somewhere here, you can take a look. And you know, it does look to be designed in the right spin direction, same as the blade itself. So Silver Wolf is designed to look uh, to be, you know, a right spin bay blade, unlike uh, Leon Crest. It's a right spin, but it is designed in the left spin style. Um, but yeah, so anyways, um, so in the right spin direction, it's supposed to parry off attacks. So considering that they kind of showcase the Beyblade battle in the um, Double Extreme Stadium, um, considering that if you get attacked from the bay that is inside the the Double Extreme Stadium's rising platform, um, it will kind of like protect itself from wretched burst. Uh, you know, so I don't know. It's just, it's just theories. It's just a theory, a bay theory. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but anyways, let me know your, all your thoughts on um, Silver Wolf's blade design. Um, personally, the metal portion of the blade design of Silver Wolf, um, it's a three-bladed design, and you know, it does kind of, at least to me personally, it looks a bit similar to. Um, how Hell Scythe looks, but just that it has um, discontinued metal points. So instead of a round, a round connected metal piece like um, Hell Scythe, this has three jagged parts, but not really jagged. So um, yeah, it kind of it kind of reminds me a bit like um, Wise Tiger, um, but you know more smooth in terms of blade design so it does remind me a bit of Hell Scythe in that direction and because of its pattern design it does look like it's gonna um, have more critical chances like Hell Scythe so technically I guess Silver Wolf is kind of like Hell Ball but Evolve <laughs> if you get the understanding of this design um, it does feel a bit like Hell Ball but with a higher defense um, yeah that's just what I think of Silver Wolf. Um, but yes, debate in the comments down below. Um, and of course, let's talk about what they showcase after. Um, I'm I'm pretty interested in the 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 content right after the <laughs> trophy announcement. So if you guys didn't know already, yes, for the Japan Cup that all the countries are going to send their participants to basically the, the Japan Asia Cup. Um, they are giving the first place winner a 1 million yen Beyblade <laughs> in Go. 1 million yen Go Beyblade. So they finally showed the trophy. So it seems like the blade itself um, is stuck to the top part of the trophy. So unlike G1 where you actually have like a gold, metal coat, gold, bronze and silver, this one is actual gold, Dren sword. And from the look of the image, it doesn't look like we are getting a full bay. It might just be the blade. The blade is the 1 million yen blade <laughs> and it's stuck to the top of the trophy. So that's pretty interesting. So that's just my speculation. I think it's just the blade. There is no ratchet, there is no bit. Um, 
it's just a blade on top of the trophy and that's it <laughs> so if i guess if the person who won the championship um if they want to sell off the blade they could just pry off the trophy and then keep the trophy without the beyblade but it's devaluing the item right i, I think <laughs> So you're gonna have to sell the whole trophy. I if the trophy has your name on it, then that's it's gonna be even more worthless in another person's eyes. Um, but I guess a collector would definitely, you know, willing to fork out one million yen <laughs> to just buy the trophy. Or it is, it's definitely gonna cost more than one million yen. But after you resell the thing, so ah. Uh, but the thing is, would the champion want to sell it off? That's another thing. So oh, who knows. If they sell it off, maybe it's just to fund their future Beyblading <laughs> shenanigans in the future. Anyways, what is most important or rather hilarious about the next information is... <laughs> for those who are participating in the Asia Cup qualifiers, okay, so those who are actually sent there to play, um, it's quite interesting. So if you do fail in qualifying for the finals finals, um, qualifiers participants get bags of rice <laughs> I, i'm laughing so hard at this uh it's, it's cute it's cute it's very very cute but um so yes the company dream rice is basically sponsoring bags of rice so if it is premium grade rice i am all for it is it's it's always nice to have really high grade japanese rice as a price it's very cool uh, for those who are from asian countries who eat rice as a staple this is pretty cool if it's high grade rice right so very cute that they are giving you know bags of rice to qualifying participants uh, it's, it's a very, very cute way to spread culture um you know spread japan's um, food industry love you know around the world you know people around the world who has usually don't have rice as staples but this is asia cup so technically the europeans the westerners are not in this tournament so people from asia who eat rice as a staple would probably appreciate this so people who are from singapore malaysia indonesia um, philippines etc 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 you know everyone from asia um we will definitely appreciate bags of rice high quality bags of rice so look forward to that anyways it was pretty cute it's a pretty cute information so here is the great news so during the um the asia cup there seems to be some um lucky draw or giveaways in the tournament itself like side events so last time in japan when they had the first g1 they actually did like the pool strength challenge this time round, they are doing some kind of prediction so i don't understand why they are putting it as like a prediction challenge so you have to guess the number of extreme dashes that's going to happen so that's that's pretty interesting compared to what we did here in singapore in singapore we had community events where we had to outbid another person's number of extreme dashes so i don't know if this is if this is going to be the same thing but they in the japanese text it says predict challenge so i guess the people there are going to do like a certain combo and then they're going to pull and then you're going to guess how many extreme dashes there are if you hit correctly then you get uh cobalt drake so yes cobalt drake is the prize and only five people will get it so yeah so that's another way of getting an old out of print Beyblade as a collection, I guess. So that's pretty cool. Hopefully, um, the rest of the world will manage to have enough stocks to do something like this. Um, considering that Cobalt Drake is no longer in production for Japan, uh, but Asia, we are still getting it. So lucky for us. <laughs> I don't know. So the other thing is there is also a repost giveaway. So I guess um, this one doesn't matter to us because. Usually, this kind of reposting giveaways are only for Japan citizens. So, um, they're getting like an Amazon 1000 yen gift card plus um, the black metal coat um, Cobalt Dragoon. So, that's the important thing right now. So, Cobalt Dragoon got double info. So, aside from the reposting, let's talk that aside. We're talking about Cobalt Dragoon Metal Coat Black Edition coming to regular retail in japan so with that news it is kind of confirmed so the thing about this information why i'm excited is that there's some rumors going around in singapore saying that 
um, there's a chance Black, uh, sorry, the, the Cobalt Dragoon Metal Coke Black Edition might be sold in an event coming soon. <laughs> um, so with this Japanese info, I can kind of say that that is pretty much guaranteed now. Because since this is going to be regularly sold, so initially how the Black uh, version of Cobalt Dragoon was um, released in Japan. It was actually through a Koro Koro Festival event. So you had to ballot to get tickets to this event and then you still have to kind of get a chance to purchase the, the, the starter. Um, so it was extremely rare in Japan at that point in time before this information came out. So now if you are going to Japan sometime soon, um, they are going to release the Cobalt Dragoon Black Metal Coat version um, for regular retail, but only at one B4 location, which is the Toys R Us and Babies R Us at, uh, at, let me see, where is the location again? Um, it's at the Ikebukuro Sunshine City stores. So, only two locations, but same place. Basically, um, Toys R Us and Babies R Us. I didn't know Babies R Us is a thing until I saw this information. I was like, wait, what? Babies R Us? Okay, but it makes sense also because it's like toddlers toys. So, kind of makes sense. So, I guess if they ever brought this to Singapore, it's going to be a B4 store exclusive. Um, so, eventually, maybe they will initially release this at a special event. Hint, hint, G1. <laughs> Uh, so G1 and maybe later on um, the regular B4 stores might sell them but at a limited quantity because you know B4 store exclusives are kind of like limited stuff so for those of you who have not bought like the Shark Edge B4 store exclusive the uh, Drigger the Drenzer you know there are some B4 store exclusives that eventually might fade out once stocks are cleared so for those of you who are collecting Beyblade take note of that um so yeah that's all the information i have for you today in today's baycast i know usually baycasts are a bit longer but i really want to sit down and talk to you guys regarding all the information that was shared uh, during the japanese bay you know bay tube um, video what do you guys think of all this information today what are your speculation on the parts how do you think they will behave will free ball be the next meta bit to replace ball on wizard rod or Wizard Rod will be obliterated because Silver Wolf might be the next defending blade. Who knows? <laughs> Let's see how. Anyway, we don't know the wait for Silver Wolf just yet. We'll have to wait until its official release or rather, you know, wait until, of course, the Hong Kong people spoil the market and take the, inform um, the Beyblades and open them up themselves and weigh everything and spoil everything on the internet. <laughs> it's always the case. Uh, anyways, just, just wait for those information to leak out. Uh, until then, let's see. Um, you know, let's speculate. Let's speculate. What is going to be for these parts? Until then, guys. I'll see you guys in the next one. Matane.